Welcome. Swipe and invite your followers. Hello, hello. We're going to get started in a few minutes. Just give an opportunity for people to come in so you can swipe and invite your followers. You're listening to some of the new music that is out this month from the CD Heartbeats and Hot Coals. Hope you've been having a great day. We're going to get started after this selection. Awesome. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm excited about tonight's message and session. I believe it's going to be very helpful. All right. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As you can see, I've got my coffee here this evening. Let's see if we can steady that and bring it a little closer. Hope you've had a wonderful day, productive day. Uh, hubby is, <laughs> yes, with a straw. <laughs> hubby is uh, getting some rest right now. He is, he's around, he's listening. But uh, <laughs> he's getting some rest tonight. He had a, um, a miraculous surgery happen. And uh, we just thank God for him taking a chill pill tonight so he can actually rest and recover. And uh, if you're able to read my title, I know sometimes we can't see titles um, on the Periscope there, but my title says something like Nymphomaniac, Shopaholics, Cursing, and Other Self-Control Issues. <laughs> and so um, we're going to dig a little bit, dig a little bit into those issues. I'm going to hopefully give you all some information tonight that's going to be beneficial to you and helpful. Um, so please, if you would, swipe and invite your followers. We are all about the truth over here, um, so we don't sugarcoat. And uh, we need a lot less sugarcoating going on in the body of Christ so that people can get delivered, healed, set free, and they can move on with their life. So I'm going to go ahead and open up in prayer. 
and then we are going to get into our topic tonight, self-control and why it is important in our relationships. All right. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. Lord, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies towards us. God, we thank you that it is no goodness of our own, Lord, that we're able to um, enter into the, the gates of praise and thanksgiving before you, Father. We honor you as our Father, as our Lord, as our Savior, as our King, as the one who has dominion and authority over and in our lives. Father God, we ask that you just have your divine way tonight. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Father, let those who enter into this uh, periscope space, Father, let them feel um, safe. God, let them feel as if they can be able to speak the truth and hear the truth as they receive on tonight. It is in your son Jesus' name that we do pray and believe. Amen. All right, so let's just dive right in. So we're talking about this issue of self-control. I was trying to figure out um, what issue um, that I could talk about tonight that would, would really benefit people who are in dating relationships, who are uh, seriously dating, seriously courting, who are in the engagement process, who are, who are even married. Um, I think that this is... Um, a topic that needs to be dealt with. And so I don't know about you, but um, since I have been on Periscope, since I've been using this app, I've had several occurrences where I've had to go through, right? I'm going through all of my um, followers and I try to go through at least once or twice a week just to make sure that I don't have uh, what they call the trolls or what they have called the false uh, false IDs of the Periscope people. And what I'm finding is a lot of those quote unquote followers, right, have been like sex bots is what they're called. <laughs> sex bots. And so you'll go into your followers list and you'll see, I mean, you know, thank God I'm delivered, but I know everyone is not delivered from things like pornography, right? Because some of these sex bots have, um, yeah, well, there's a lot of them. Some of these images that are being used as, um, as people faces, some of these people have no clothes on. Some of them have pictures of their vagina. Some of them have pictures of their butts bent over as their profile pic on Periscope. And so if you're going through and you're checking your followers, yeah, if you're going through and you're checking your followers and God has delivered you from that kind of stuff and that is what pops up into your face, it is traumatizing, okay, to somebody who is struggling with that area and is, is asking God for deliverance, you know, so you have all of these different things that come along with the social media climate, okay, that's kind of what I'm getting at. So... In going through my um, followers list, right, I'm keep, I keep having to block these users who keep adding me. And when you, you have to click on their um, profile in order to block them, which means you're still being inundated with their images. And you can read, you know, their description in their name. And some of them say, hey, have sex with me. Some of them say, invite me over. Some of them say you know, uh, click on this link to sign up for private, you know, naked sessions or whatever. And, you know, a lot of them say I'm a nymphomaniac. And so I wanted to deal with that because believe it or not, nymphomania is not something that is just a subject that should be dealt with, with unsaved people. <laughs> so that's why I added it into my self-control topics tonight because when you're talking about self-control in your relationships we're talking about self-control across the deck and believe it or not some people who are saved deal with nymphomania they deal with having a sex addiction they deal with having a lust issue they deal with having um, what I call a speech issue. That means somebody who just has a filthy mouth. Your language is filthy. You have no filters 
um, over what you say. Some people are dealing with um, gambling issues, financial issues. Um, some people are dealing with obesity or they're dealing with poor eating habits. They just eat, 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 eat uncontrollably, right? Some people deal with shop with being a shopaholic. They spend every single dime they get, they spend it. Or they they eat emotionally or they shop emotionally. Sometimes when people are, are dealing with different things in their life, whether it be a crisis or whatever, that is one of the ways that they channel that emotion. It could be through eating. It could be through shopping. And for some people, it's even through sex. They'll go and they'll have um, one night stands or they'll, you know, and I know people might be saying, are Christians doing this? But the statistics show that Christians are having sex before marriage. And they're still saying, I'm, I'm a Christian, but I believe in having sex before marriage. So that's why I wanted to talk about these things, because all of them, to me, tie into self-control, right? We know in Galatians chapter 5 that self-control is a fruit of, of the spirit in other words it is a christian characteristic that lets people know that you have the spirit of god living on the inside of you that he's not just a buddy you know he's not casper the friendly ghost he doesn't come and go but the spirit of god is living on the inside of you and so what is what is what is this self-control thing right what are some benefits to self-control I want to go into that first. First of all, self-control keeps in check self-destructive behaviors. And I've already named a few. Okay. These are self-destructive behaviors, addictive behaviors, obsessive compulsive um, behaviors. So self-control, when I have it, it helps me to stop from, keep from destroying myself. Right. The second thing, self-control brings balance to your life. Self-control brings balance to your life. Self-control helps you to put your emotional responses in check. It helps you to not operate out of your emotions, which can go up, can go down, can be uh, flatlined at some, at some point. Some people don't care about anything and it shows, right? Um, Self-control can also eliminate the feeling of helplessness, like feeling as if you have no control over your life. But self-control lets you know that, yes, you do have some choice in your decision making. It allows you to not be too dependent on a person, but it allows you to be dependent on the Holy Spirit. Okay. And self-control helps you to, be, to build things in your life like responsibility and trustworthiness. Because if I can't, if I see that you lack self-control, how can I trust you in a relationship? How can I see that you're responsible in a relationship when you're lacking self-control? Okay. So what are some things about when a person has no self-control, right? It shows that there's a lack of discipline in their life and a lack of willpower in their life. There's a lack of discipline and there's a lack of willpower. Is that going to be a problem in a relationship? More than likely it is. Self-control, the lack of self-control shows that you don't desire to change and improve. Because when you have self-control, it requires you to change and it requires you to improve to build that self-control and to maintain the self-control that you have. When you don't have self-control, sometimes it's based out of the belief that self-control limits you rather than empowers you. I'll say it again. When you lack self-control, it can be founded in the belief or the thought that self-control limits you rather than empowers you. Okay? So the first thing we need to do is if we're dealing with a lack of self-control, whether it's in speech, whether it's in our financial habits, whether it's with lust, whether it's with sexual acti appetite or activity, whether it's in our eating habits, whether it's in, you know, how we spend money, you have to identify, number one, you have to identify what is pushing you 
to behave in an uncontrolled way. I'll say that again. The first thing you have to do is you have to identify what is pushing you to behave in an uncontrolled way. What is pushing me to behave in a way that my sexual appetite is either going to uh, cause me to be at risk, right, for some kind of disease. Because uh, no sex is safe sex. The only safe sex there is is abstinence. So if you're in a relationship and you're having sex outside of marriage, that's not safe sex. The only safe sex there is is abstinence, okay? So if it's in my sexual appetite, I've got to figure out what is it that's pushing me to behave in an uncontrolled way? Is it something that I'm tied to emotionally? Is it something that I use as a revenge tool? What is it that's causing me to behave in an uncontrolled way? Swipe and invite your followers if you will. Thank you for the hearts as we continue teaching. So when you're talking about self-control, one more time, you have to identify what is pushing me to behave in an uncontrolled way. For me, the huge one of my huge things was my speech. I would curse people out without a thought. <laughs> and I had to come to the place where I recognized that I needed to change and I needed to improve in this area. And I couldn't wait until I got into a relationship to change and improve that. But I had to go back to what is pushing me to behave in this uncontrolled way. And for me, it was a mindset that I grew up hearing it, right? I grew up in a household, yes. <laughs> I grew up in a household where it was just constant cursing because I didn't grow up as a church baby or whatever people say. I grew up in the hood. So everywhere I went, there was some form of cursing going on. So it became, what it, what it became was a habit, right? In certain spaces, I knew that I could speak the king's English, but in other spaces, I could curse till the cows came home. And then when I found myself not being able to transition between the two worlds, and I just kept cursing, and then when I really wanted to stop cursing and I couldn't stop cursing, then I recognized that it was a stronghold. Because even when I was trying to stop, I could not. So then... I had to come to the conclusion that God, I cannot stop this on my own. I cannot stop it on my own. Holy Spirit, take control over my faculties. I submit myself to you. I submit my mental faculties to you. I submit my speech to you. And I'm asking you to deliver me from the stronghold of cursing. Well, guess what I had to do? I had to start renewing my mind. I had to start restricting the kinds of things that I watched and heard, right? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. So the more that you hear profanity, hello somebody, the more that thing is strengthened in your life. And a lot of people don't seem to understand that connection between what you hear and what you believe and what you act on. So I had to begin to restrict the kinds of movies, the kinds of programs and things that I was watching, that I was listening to, because it was getting into my mindset and it was reinforcing something that I was trying to be delivered from. That's the same thing with, this, with the sexual addiction. You can't keep bringing things into your eyesight, into your hearing, if you're trying to be delivered from it, okay? So... We know 2 Corinthians 10 verses uh, 3 through 6 talks about for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the what? Pulling down of strongholds. That word strongholds there means mindsets. So I've got to, I've got to take the initiative to start pulling down the mindset, pulling down the doctrines, pulling down the belief systems that have been locked within me that Though they may have grown up inside of me, doesn't mean that they're right. Doesn't mean that they're true. Doesn't mean that they're correct. Okay? So, 
the way that I do that is I've now got to uproot the things that I have allowed to grow and implant itself inside of me. And that goes for anything. So again, identifying what is pushing you to behave in an uncontrolled way. What is pushing it? What is driving it? Is it a childhood issue? Is it, is it tied to emotions? Is it tied to trauma? Right? I've counseled, um, because I worked as an educator for 15 years. I've counseled young ladies who have gotten into the sex trade. They've gotten into prostitution. And when you, when you start counseling them and you start talking to them about what is be driving this behavior now, OK, you don't have a pimp now, but you're still sexually promiscuous. So what drove the behavior? Sometimes for one for one young lady, she shared that it was her mother that um, sold her for the first time. So it was a family connection. It was the feeling of I'm not worthy because my own family member sold me into a life of sexual trafficking. OK, so again, you have to look at what is driving my behavior in this uncontrolled area. If it's emotional eating, do you only seem to um, lose control over your eating habits when you break up with somebody or you get out of a bad relationship or when you get into a, a disagreement or something with your family or there's a crisis going on or you're a person that only eats when you are feeling anxiety about certain things. So you have to look at what is pushing the behavior? What is pushing the behavior? Because I've got to get to that in order to start dealing with the fact that I lack control in this area. Okay. So let's talk about some helpful things to help you with self-control. Okay. Number one, is meditation. We talked about that a little bit just now. Meditating on the word of God. Meditating on that which is good. Meditating on that which is pure. Meditating on that which is lovely. Meditating on that which is which is of a good report. Again, if you're dealing with sexual issues, you can't meditate on porn and think that you're going to be delivered from sexual issues. Okay? If you are dealing with um, changing your eating habits, yes, I have. If you're, if you're dealing with changing your eating habits, you can't focus on unhealthy food choices. You can't go to places that only give you unhealthy food choices. You may even have to change the place that you're going to get your groceries from. You may have to go to a, um, a whole food store, right? and totally change up the choices that you have in front of you. All right. So meditating, casting down imaginations, casting down strongholds, those mindsets. You can't live in the place of, well, this is what I've always done. You can't live in the place of, well, this is how mama and daddy did it. And if it was good for them, then it should be good for me when it's detrimental to your life. The second one, Believe it or not, what you eat is linked to your self-control. What you eat is linked to your self-control. Scientifically speaking, things like whole grain, things like lean meats, things like uh, fruit and vegetables help and aid your brain in the proper nutrition in order to be able to make sound decisions. Sound decisions need to be made when you're trying to establish self-control okay number three exercise it is often proven that even 10 minutes of movement per day can get those endorphins going and if anybody knows scientifically this is proven the same endorphins that are released when you're exercising are the same endorphins that are released in sexual activity wow it's the same chemical makeup. Wow. It, that's why it's a feel good. That's why wow. some people get addicted to exercise. Okay. So if you're a person who may be dealing with sexual addiction, try 10 minutes of movement. That's not sexual <laughs> <laughs> daily for your exercise to get those endorphins kicking. 
because some people get addicted to the endorphins, right? And so they're, they're having sexual activity, but their sexual activity is now putting them at risk for sexually transmitted diseases. So exercise doesn't put you at risk for sexually transmitted diseases. So exercise makes sense. All right. Number four, sleep. Okay. Sleep. It is now proven. <laughs> it is now proven that a lack of sleep drains the glucose that is needed for what's called the prefrontal cortex of the brain. All right. And it's needed for self control. So if you're not sleeping enough, what you need for your prefrontal cortex is now being drained. And so your lack of sleep is, is setting you up to make unsound decisions. Okay. But sleep actually restores what you need for that prefrontal cortex to work properly. So meditation, healthy eating, 10 minutes of, of exercise a day and proper rest all help and aid in self-control in your life. Now I'm not a health expert. I've just done my research. Okay. Meditation, eating, exercise, and sleep all help in your self-control. Finally, so we talked about identifying what's causing you to behave in the uncontrolled way. Some ways that you can help assist yourself and, and begin to build and improve your self-control naturally. And then lastly, begin to affirm that you have the power to choose. You have the power to choose. You have the power to choose to control your reactions, your behavior, your emotions, and your thoughts. You have the power to choose. God did not make us robots. God did not take away free will. And God uh, has given us some things that will help us with our own willpower. And why is this important? Why is this important? Okay, I'll give you the example with me. Before I got married, I was sexually active. I spent, from the time I got, from the time I re rededicated my life to the Lord, until the time I got married, that was from... 18 to 22. So from 18 to 22, I had no sexual relations with anybody. I had no sexual relations with my fiance, who's now my husband. I made up my mind that I did not want to take my relationship, my engagement, and continue in the habit of sexual activity before marriage. So a lot of times people say, well, you know, if, if you've already um, had sex before marriage, it's kind of too late, you know, but you can make a commitment to choose to not have sex before marriage. You can stop. I didn't say it was going to be easy because we all know once you have, you know, tasted of the activity, there's going to obviously be some struggle. There's going to be some contention. There's going to be um, some resistance because now you're having to build up a resistance that had you remained a virgin or not sexually active, you wouldn't have to deal with that. But the reality is I chose to decide that I was not, number one, I was not going to have sex with anybody from the time I was 18 until the time I got married. I was not going to have any sex, have sex with anyone else. And I also chose that I wasn't going to um, wait until I got engaged to make that decision. I didn't know when it was going to happen. I got engaged at 19 and I got married at 22. So one of the things that I learned in that time period was I learned that it was necessary and important for me to build self-control in the area of sex. I know people don't like to talk about it. I know people don't think it's supposed to be a part of, of, of your discussion when you're talking about couples and, and dating and courtship and all those things. Sometimes we just assume that people aren't having sex. <laughs> but the reality is 
you need to build self-control in that area because if you're not building self-control what's going to happen in your marriage what's going to happen in your marriage if you come across times and seasons in your marriage where you can't have sex with your spouse or your partner is it going to be a thing well well hey if i can't get any then you know i'm just going to step out on the relationship so you have to think about those things, okay? When a person that you're in a serious relationship with, when you are looking and you are seeing that they don't have self-control, it is a red flag. I don't care what it is, whether it's their speech, like we talked about, whether it's gambling with financial issues or them being a shopaholic, them being a nymphomaniac, them with their um, eating habits, whatever the area is, if you are seeing beforehand that they have no self-control, please do not think that that is not going to affect your relationship with them in the long run because it is. Again, self-control is a fruit of the spirit. Self-control is something that you want in your partner and it's something that your partner should expect in you. So again, I hope that this was helpful Understand that um, self-control is important in your relationship. Remember, we gave you some um, things that are, will be helpful to building and improving on self-control. We talked about what you need to identify first if you're struggling with self-control. And then recognizing that you have the power to choose. Don't let anyone tell you that you just can't help it. That's what God gave us the Holy Spirit for so that he can help us with our can't help it. <laughs> so um, I hope that this session was helpful for you. I didn't want to go too long this evening. Um, and I encourage you, if you are in a relationship, make sure you're having these conversations. And if you're noticing that you're in a relationship with someone who has absolutely no self-control and it's in more than one area that we covered tonight, that's a red flag. And you need to be able to have a conversation with them to say, look, I know I care about you. I love you. You know, I see us having a future together. But these are some areas that I'm noticing that you don't have self-control in. And how are you going to handle that? How are you working on that? How are you improving to build your self-control? Do you have any desire to have self-control in those areas? And if they tell you no, I'm just going to say run run for your life because <laughs> the last thing you want to do is 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 be in a relationship or be in a marriage um that is designed for forever and you are living with somebody who is just out of control and lacking self-control it's really going to um to to affect your oneness your ability to be one with that person and as it gets could have other ramifications on your relationship as a whole. So I pray that this was um, helpful to you. If you like the music that you heard in the beginning, I am not. I am not. I have, um, I worked at an at-risk school and so we had counselors on hand and we, we partnered with them, but I've done lots of crisis management training, but I'm not formally a counselor, a certified counselor for it. So if you would like uh, to check out my music, I do have it available. It is for sale. If you'd like a signed copy, you can um, email me at lifenationkc at gmail.com and I can give you more information about how to purchase a signed copy and um, we're going to go ahead and close out in prayer so thank you all for watching thank you all for joining in thank you uh, Green Tomiko for um, commenting so let's go ahead and pray Heavenly Father I thank you for this word on tonight thank you I pray, Father God, that you would um, have your way, Lord, and anybody who uh, watches this replay, Father God, that they would share it, that they would um, share it with those that they know that are in need of this word, Father, concerning self-control in our relationships. God, we want to have healthy relationships in every single aspect.
of our lives. Father, not just our romantic relationships, but also the relationships that we come into contact with our friends, with our family, Lord. Father, we know that we see those around us, God, who are struggling in certain areas, Father. And I pray, God, that the information that has been given tonight, Father, would be helpful in how we talk and how we discuss and how we communicate with those that we love regarding self-control. Father, you, you said in your word that self-control is a fruit that makes it evident that the Holy Spirit is living within us. Father God, help us, Lord God, to not sweep this issue under the rug, Father. Help us to identify those things, God, that are pushing us to behave in uncontrolled ways in our life. Help us, Father God, to know, to trust, and believe, and rely on your word. God, that you've given us power to overcome everything that concerns us. Father God, we thank you for the power to choose. We thank you, Lord, that you've not made us robots. But you've given us power, God, over our reactions, our behaviors, our emotions, and our thoughts by the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you would activate your power on the inside of your people, God. That we would not just hear your word, but that we would be doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Well, I thank you for so much for tuning in. I pray that you have a blessed evening and take care. And we'll see you back tomorrow with our five word Friday. Take care and God bless.